Hey guys, how you doing? My name's Gus. I'm a cosmetic and implant dentist based around London in the UK. And today let's talk about osteoporosis. Okay, and if you've got osteoporosis, can you have dental implants? And what do you need to think about specifically relating to osteoporosis and dental implants? Now, this is quite a complicated subject and I'm actually splitting it up into two videos. So today we'll talk about osteoporosis and dental implants and what kind of evidence and findings there has been in this field but also when we're talking about this we need to talk about some of the most common medications which are prescribed for osteoporosis and how they affect uh, dental implants okay because they can affect dental implants in a big way so that will be part two of this video and hopefully I can get that shot and online for you guys next week okay so if you want to watch that you know hit subscribe and you'll get notified about that but let's talk about osteoporosis today now, for those people who don't know what osteoporosis is, it's a condition which affects bone turnover. So inside every one of us, every human being, there is there's a skeleton. Now, this skeleton isn't just a solid piece of bone. It's constantly being broken down and rebuilt, okay? And this, this is absolutely normal. It takes about three months for, for new bone to form, and then it's broken down and rebuilt, broken down and rebuilt, kind of like our skin. Because because in, on our skin, we shed the outermost surface of our skin, but new skin is always being formed from within. And it's exactly the same process with bones. Now, what we want is when we're growing, uh, we want our bone deposition, so the rate at which we make bone, to be bigger than the rate that we um, destroy our own bone. So then we get this net gain in bone mass volume. And this typically happens and we reach, reach a peak about the age of 30. And then it's normal for it to kind of level out, okay? So you want it to be balanced. You want to be creating bone at the same rate as we're destroying bone. But for people who've got osteoporosis, what tends to happen is the rate at which they reduce their bone increases in relation to the the rate at which they can they can create new bones so the net amount of bone in the body is generally decreasing this results in thinner bones more fragile bones and you're much more prone to to breakages of of long limbs and hips and and things like that after a fall okay so that's what osteoporosis is the reason we're interested about this is that for good successful dental implant treatment we need to have good solid bone around our implants okay and as we all know implants is a very expensive expensive treatment and it's surgical so you really want to know that when you start the process of dental implant treatment you're going to get the maximum long-term benefit you're going to feel great about smiling you'll be able to eat what you want and it, it will just be like replacing a natural tooth okay that's our end goal now for people who've got osteoporosis um there's no clear evidence on how it affects dental implants. You see, when I say evidence, lots of people are doing lots and lots of little studies. Some of these studies are good. They're looking at hundreds and hundreds of people over a long period of time, you know, 10, 20 years. Some of these studies are pretty poor. They're looking at six people over the course of six months. That's got, that's no use pretty much. So you get these, um, publications or, or articles written which try to combine all of the evidence which we have so far and try and make sense of it and I've been reading a couple of these so I can share the information with you and to cut a long story short the survival rate of implants in people who've got osteoporosis versus those people who don't have this is the same Okay, so there's, you're not at a higher risk of losing an implant if you have osteoporosis, but with all of these things, it's not quite that simple. You see, there's something we need to look at called marginal bone loss. And marginal bone loss is essentially the, the, the bone around the neck of the implant, okay? And that shrinking down the implant maybe a few millimeters or so. And it used to be that we would accept this marginal bone loss with certain types of implants and types of connection of the implant and the tooth together. No matter what you did, even in really healthy individuals, you would get a few millimeters of marginal bone loss and then typically it would stay stable. 
Now, these studies looking at osteoporosis, what they found was that the with people who've got osteoporosis, they're much more likely to get this marginal bone loss around implants. And you might think, okay, that's fine. If it's a common thing, you know, does it really matter? The thing is, we don't know in the long term, 10, 20 years, that did the osteoporosis, which started on day one, or maybe after five or 10 years, is that what affected bone loss? Say you lose the implant in 20 years, which to be honest is not bad, you've got a good lifespan out of it, but it, what, did you lose that because you had osteoporosis or you developed osteoporosis during the course of having the, the implant? This is a little bit unclear. We're not quite sure on, on, on the kind of technicalities like this. Now, marginal bone loss is essentially the beginning of bone being reduced around the implant. So it is something we need to pay attention to. And there are implant designs, which I'll cover in another video on another day, um, which will help reduce this marginal bone loss. Okay, things like platform shifting. So you can see that on this implant, uh, this x-ray of an implant, you can see the implant is a certain width and the tooth coming out of it is much narrower. Okay, this is what we call a platform shift. Things like this and the position of the implant help protect against marginal bone loss. So if you've got osteoporosis, should you have dental implants? It's a difficult question to answer. It depends on the medication you're on, the dosage of the medication and, and things like that as well. But in general, I would say yes, okay? You have to make a judgment on the, the benefit that you're going to get from replacing missing teeth and having absolutely solid teeth um, that you can chew with, that you, 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 know, you feel comfortable talking with and all of this kind of stuff. And if an implant doesn't work out after five, 10 years, and if it was because of the medication you're on, then you can probably have another go, okay? Now, the medication is really important because this, in, in my next video, I'll explain this. It can sometimes open the door to something called osteonecrosis, okay, which is basically little chunks of the jawbone dying. It sounds horrific, it doesn't hurt, but it's quite difficult to treat. OK, um, but typically those people who are on this kind of medication, which causes this, are on a low enough dose to have it. OK, so I don't want to put the fear of God inside you if you've got osteoporosis and you're watching this. I, I do think that dental implant treatment is fantastic and have a chat with your implant surgeon. And if you feel that the risks and benefits are tipped in your favor, then you should definitely have, have this kind of treatment. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful. If you've got something out of it, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, comments, you know, please pop them below. It was a subscriber's comment and question which inspired this video. So if you've got questions and comments around this kind of stuff, pop them below and I will read them. I, I get a notification for the vast majority of the, the comments that I get and it could help inspire the next video. Okay, so take care.